Coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue. An acclaimed MTSU alumnus helps MTSU celebrate the 13th annual Tennessee Guitar Festival. Hear more of the sounds that grace the stage of MTSU's Hinton Music Hall. Partnerships are a way to help expand MTSU's reach around the globe. One agreement with Albany Technical College in Georgia is a win for both schools in the growing field of electromechanical engineering technology. In this month's cover story, MTSU's Electronic Media Department's EMC Productions brings home a national award for live sports coverage of a Blue Raider basketball game. We'll show you a taste of the winning production. And friends gathered outside what has long been remembered as Project Help to honor the center's founder by changing the name to the Ann Campbell Early Learning Center. All that and more coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue. Hello and welcome to another edition of Out of the Blue. I'm Chris Davis. MTSU hosted the 13th annual Tennessee Guitar Festival in May, featuring some of America's best young guitarists. Graduate assistant Lauren Dickens sat down with Dr. William Yelverton, the director of the event and professor of guitar at MTSU, to discuss the three-day festival, which included performances by Yelverton's former student and internationally acclaimed guitarist, Silviu Chule. Dr. William Yelverton, professor of guitar at Middle Tennessee State University, always knew that his student, Silvio Chule, had a promising music career ahead of him. Well, I mean, I knew from the day that I met him when he was 17 that he was going to be, you know, a great musician. He's a true prodigy. He's been playing since he was six years old. Um, and what really impressed me also was his, his ability as a, uh, as a songwriter and commercial music musician as well. He write. In May, Chule returned to MTSU to showcase his music as part of the 13th annual Tennessee Guitar Festival. As the director, Yelverton devotes countless hours to perfect every aspect of the three-day festival, which includes a guitar competition, concerts, workshops, and lectures. I do everything. I, I've even designed the, uh, the, the graphics for the uh, poster. I, I host the artist, choose the artist. I, uh, I choose the artists by, uh, it's actually a fairly s small network in the, uh, in, the, in the academic classical guitar world, and I, I know a lot of the uh, colleagues who have produced really good students and so on and so forth. This year's festival also featured music from Chad Ibison, an emerging virtuoso from the University of Texas at Austin. Yeah, Chad has been around a long time. I mean, he's been competing. I, I believe I judged him at a competition. So Chad studies, I believe, at the University of Texas, Austin, which is a, a very fine uh, school. Like the musicians he brings to the festival each year, Yelverton discovered his passion for music at a young age. Well, I started like most kids uh, during the, uh, uh, with electric guitar and folk music. I'm sort of a, a product of the progressive rock era of the early 70s, and uh, I think if I had grown up in any other era of music, I probably wouldn't have been a musician. These musical influences all but shape the sounds at the Guitar Festival. It's a classical guitar festival. We try to get something different. For example, Silvio plays flamenco, which is a Spanish gypsy sort of style of, of playing. Um, in years past, we've had um, some folk musicians also. With the help of his dedicated colleagues and musicians from all over the world, Yelverton will make the Tennessee Guitar Festival a success for years to come. MTSU and China's Hanzhou Normal University have renewed a Confucius Institute partnership that began five years ago for another five years. MTSU President Sidney A. McPhee and Hanzhou Normal University President Du Wei formally signed an extended partnership in China in May. The partnership allows Confucius Institute to continue to work promoting Chinese language, history and culture. That includes a half a million dollars in grant funding to the Murfreesboro campus. Over the next five years, the partnership may also include a cultural and music center here on MTSU's campus, first announced by Madam Xu Lin during the spring commencement address. 
MTSU also signed a partnership with Shanghai Polytechnic University in the field of mechatronics engineering. MTSU President Sidney A. McPhee and Shanghai Polytechnic University President Yu Tao, seen here, signed a memorandum of understanding that allows the universities to exchange students and faculty and develop joint research projects. MTSU's new mechatronics engineering degree program includes partnerships with Bridgestone and Nissan with operations in Rutherford County. President McPhee also signed an agreement with Xi'annan University in Qinzhou, allowing student and faculty exchanges between the two universities. Xi'annan specializes in teacher training in medical sciences and is affiliated with eight area hospitals. MTSU also signed a pact with Shanxi Normal University in Xi'an. Xi'an is located in the northwestern region of China in Shanxi Province, where some of China's top cultural sites are located. Shanxi Normal will be one of three hosts to a group of Rutherford County school children and parents visiting in China in July. The signing with Shanxi Normal University was the fifth agreement signed during the MTSU delegation trip to China, including Communication University of China. Partnerships like the one recently signed with Albany Technical College in southwest Georgia is a major part of MTSU's ability to attract students not only from Tennessee, but the region and around the world. With the new transfer agreement in electromechanical engineering technology, students who graduate with an associate's degree from Albany Tech will find the transition to MTSU smoother and faster. It's called a 2 plus 2 transfer agreement. We love to have academic partnerships that make sense, make a difference. Mm. And as you already stated, uh, for your community to need this kind of engineering technology uh, where it will produce new generation of students who will then go on to careers and help the community in economic development is really what it's about. We're here to help the whole region be successful. It helps us get students from your institution who have completed uh, their associate's degree and are able to continue on here and then go back to your community and do right by your community. And um, so I, I really want to thank your faculty and our faculty who have worked on this in terms of uh, coming up with a, a seamless two plus two relationship that will make a difference for both institutions in both states and both communities. And to find a partner who thinks that electromechanical engineering is as important as we do to serve our employees and especially to serve young students from Southwest Georgia who won't need to have the opportunity to um, learn so that they can earn and, after, and as they do that the potential of earning a bachelor's degree and broadening their horizon. We are grateful to Middle Tennessee State University for agreeing to be our partner and, and working with us. And we are anxious to be able to send you some students. Great. All right. And we're going to love having them up here. So uh, right. I hope it's, it's going to be a fruitful relationship for a long, long time. Albany Tech has roughly 50 students concentrating in electromechanical engineering. MTSU has about 650 students in a variety of engineering technology concentrations, with about 150 in electromechanical engineering technology. Four MTSU students have been honored with one of the top education abroad scholarships in the nation the Benjamin A. Gilman International Scholarship, sponsored by the U.S. State Department. Two of the four students are pictured here, Elizabeth Inc. and Michelle Kelly. Inc., a university studies major, is studying Eastern philosophy and the Sherpa culture in Nepal this summer. Kelly, a double major in aerospace and physics, is studying in the Czech Republic. With a grant from the Grammy Foundation, archivist John Fabke has spent the past year organizing and preserving hundreds of recordings from Dr. Charles Wolfe, an MTSU English professor and folklorist who captured musical and audio interview from hundreds of Roots musical practitioners over four decades. Wolfe, who died in 2006, donated his work to MTSU's Center for Popular Music. In a recent interview with Jenna Logue on WMOT-FM's MTSU On the Record, Fabke said Wolf was very prolific. A whole variety of things and the, the, 
the goal of the project was to uh, organize, identify, and, and preserve those materials and then ultimately to provide, get that set up in such a way to provide access uh, to the recordings uh, for researchers that would want to use that to, to do more research on, on uh, uh, kind of carry on Charles, carry on his work. Dr. Wolf wrote more than 20 books on American music and annotated more than 100 record albums, earning three Grammy nominations for his album liner notes. For more information on the Center for Popular Music, you can go to their website, popmusic.mtsu.edu. MTSU chemistry professor Judith Iriarte Gross is the inaugural recipient of Rutherford Cable's Athena International Leadership Award. The award was presented to Iriarte Gross by Rutherford Cable, a women in business networking organization, and Martha May Hood Mertz of the Athena International. Iriarte Gross has been a leader in making young women aware of careers in STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. One of MTSU's hidden gems on campus is the Todd Art Gallery. The gallery is free and open to the public Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. with the ongoing schedule of eclectic art, sculpture, and visual presentations by students, faculty, and internationally known artists. We thought we'd turn to the gallery's director for a tour of the latest exhibit and a look at what's ahead this summer and fall. Hello, my name is Eric Snyder. I am the director of the Todd Art Gallery, and I'm standing here before you in front of the Todd Hall, and I'd like to have you join me today as we go inside and show you around Todd Art Gallery. We have a show right now, it's called North, South, East, West, and it was brought to us by our Student Gallery Committee, which is a sponsor, a group of students that represent each area of our department. Uh, this is actually curated by a couple of my student gallery committee. It's a body of students that represent those same areas of the department. We put them together a couple of years ago and they came to me this year and they wanted to host a national student, undergraduate student uh, call to artists. What we have got here is about 34 different artists from as far away as Oregon, Wyoming, Maine, Florida, uh, several from Memphis, uh, Knoxville, uh, Kentucky, you name it. All media is represented from projection work to uh, you know, painting. It's great that it brings a whole different facet of what other students are, are doing that gives our students you know, another feel for a direction that they might want to think about going in. In terms of our normal hours, we're, we're Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, uh, closing only on university and uh, state holidays, federal holidays. We're always free and open to the public. We've got a nice uh, season plan. We open up with an alumni show where we're focusing on alums from the past six to 30 years. And so that show will go up mid-August and it runs for about three weeks. That will be followed by a traveling exhibit of 17 young college age students from the Kennedy Center for the Arts uh, all students who have some sort of disability, who've overcome a challenge, uh, and then that's followed by uh, an illustration show where we're bringing in Kadir Nelson, who's a, a fantastic African-American artist. And, and then, of course, we end the, the semester with our studio uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts candidates exhibits. They all have to have an exit ex exhibit as part of their final requirement to be able to, to uh, get that degree and go. When they come into art, they have to face, how do I deal with this problem without any kind of structure for solving it? And you look around and you see 
how they come to solutions for solving these problems. And as a result, you see some very nice artistic results. 25 to 10, Middle Tennessee has scored 11 in a row. And another H&R Block review. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I am a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I am a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I am committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I'm a Blue Raider. True Blue. Being a Blue Raider takes more than just coming ready to play. A Blue Raider doesn't just leave it all on the field. It's not just a matter of simply fighting for every inch. At their very core, a Blue Raider is true. Are you? Middle Tennessee celebrates 100 years of football this season. Rise up. Let them hear you in Floyd. Season tickets on sale now. Go BlueRaiders.com slash tickets. At Middle Tennessee State University, students don't just earn a degree in an electronic media communications field, they get to learn, collaborate, and create. Middle Tennessee students get hands-on, real-world experience, and our graduates have found exciting jobs with some of the world's communication leaders. This is just one community among many. Explore all that MTSU has to offer. Devoted to student success, Middle Tennessee State University. Middle Tennessee State University's Department of Aerospace is one of the nation's largest and most respected collegiate aviation programs. Whether you want to learn to fly planes or keep them safe in the air and on the ground, MTSU offers a degree for the career path that fits you. Our graduates have landed incredible jobs with the most respected companies in the industry. This is just one community among many. Explore all that MTSU has to offer. Devoted to student success, Middle Tennessee State University. In this month's cover story, a national award for MTSU's Department of Electronic Media Communication. EMC Productions won the Outstanding Live Game and Event Production Collegiate Category at the 2014 College Sports Media Awards. The award stems from the production of an MTSU basketball game against East Carolina on January 30th that aired live on WUXP Channel 30 in Nashville. Here's the footage submitted for the contest. Try to go inside, stolen away, Sean Jones out to Terrence. Raiders three on three, Terrence on top now to Raymond, right side to Hammonds. High post to Rozier, stolen away. Richmond on the run, one on one with Raymond. Layup off the bottom of the backboard. Raymond gets the rebound and comes the other way. Hammonds pulls up on the run, three ball, no good, tip, Sean Jones. Great positioning by Sean Jones on the weak side, saw the pass, go to the right wing, immediately changed his course, went to the left block and got that one to go down. Great work. Raiders by 13, Zangari. His three no good. The offside rebound taken by Raymond. Long outlet pass to Terrence. In the lane, put up and in. Timeout, Jeff Lebo and East Carolina. Well, Middle obviously is doing a great job of taking their defense, getting stops and then getting into transition. Maybe as good as we've looked in that regard in quite some time. 25 to 10, Middle Tennessee has scored 11 in a row. And another H&R block review showing Marcus Terrence with the finish. And there you see on the back of Torin Walker's jersey, there is Torin's Twitter handle. All of the shooting shirts here on social media night have their Twitter handle. We've already gotten messages tonight from Brian Brooks, among others, on Twitter using the hashtag MT on MyTV30. By the way, our producer, our normal producer, Chris Davis, is uh, had a really special honor today. He was selected as a member of the media and as a college student to be in the media pool today 
in President Obama's address at McGavick High School in Nashville. And no doubt, it'll be covered very well by Mr. Davis. No question. Ball popped away. Hammonds out tonight. Layup good. Defense to offense. That's just how simple it works. Middle Tennessee really putting the clamp down on East Carolina right now. East Carolina, 4 of 13 from the floor, 31%. Only one three made so far. So far, exactly. But talked about this on a local radio show today. No lead is safe with these guys. They get the ball on the baseline, and Caleb White able to knock it down, and that breaks a 12-0 run. Make that a 13-0 run by middle. It is 27 to 12, the lead cut back to 15. Yeah, Jeff, East Carolina number two in Conference USA, number 41 in the nation in terms of scoring, so they know how to put points up. Terrence misses a three, and East Carolina gets the rebound. They get it out to Peter Torlak. He is from Belgrade, Serbia. Torlak drives against Nico Hunter, short. Upshaw with the rebound. Hunter made him adjust that shot. Hammonds lob, Upshaw! Hello, Chattanooga! Well, I love the communication there. Reggie Upshaw pointed to Kerry Hammonds before he got to midcourt and just pointed towards the rim. Kerry just stopped and dropped it right in there to him. That's excellent communication and execution. Richmond misses a three. Rebound tipped out. Who's got it? Richmond will come up with it for the Pirates. Right side, they get it to Roberts Campbell. They try to work it inside, and Nico Hunter will get the hold against Zangari with 6.09 to go. MTSU signed a pact in 2013 with Sinclair Broadcast for EMC students to produce 11 athletic events for live broadcasts with the Electronic Media Department's 40-foot, $1.7 million HD mobile production lab. We'll be right back. So we're pleased to come together today to recognize uh, and memorialize, if you will, Ann Campbell with her name to this particular program. Being True Blue is giving your all on and off the court. My name is Ebony Rowe and I am True Blue. Being True Blue is embracing unique perspectives. My name is Iris Montes and I am True Blue. Being True Blue is helping students solve real world problems. My name is Cliff Ricketts and I am True Blue. Being True Blue is making the world a safer place. My name is Sam Willie and I am True Blue. Being a Blue Raider takes more than just coming ready to play. A Blue Raider doesn't just leave it all on the field. It's not just a matter of simply fighting for every inch. At their very core, a Blue Raider is true. Are you? Middle Tennessee celebrates 100 years of football this season. Rise up. Let them hear you in Floyd. Season tickets on sale now. Go BlueRaiders.com slash tickets. At Middle Tennessee State University, we are devoted to student success. We offer the advantages of a major comprehensive university with the care and attention found at a small college. We are a community that believes in learning, growth, and service. We hold these values dear, and there's a simple phrase that conveys them. I am True Blue. I am True Blue. I am True Blue. MT's Ebony Rowe has been honored by the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame as one of Tennessee's Female Amateur Athletes of the Year. Rowe was a two-time All-American honorable mention. During her career, she ranked in the NCAA Top 25 in four statistical categories. She had 26 double-doubles in her senior year, ranking her fifth nationally. She ranked 12th 
with 11 points, six rebounds per game. 13th with 735 total points and 20th with a scoring average of 21.6 points per game. Her honors included Conference USA Player of the Year and CUSA Championship MVP. She holds 15 school records at MTSU. Well, it had been long known as MTSU's Project Help, a place where special needs children learn alongside other young children. But earlier this spring, with the unveiling of a new sign, Project Help officially got its new name after the founder, the Ann Campbell Early Learning Center. It was a special day when friends gathered outside the center to honor Campbell and her vision. When we found out that Ann was getting ready to um, go to her next place, we were very fortunate to have Dr. McPhee petition TBR in order to be able to name the program the Ann Campbell Early Learning Center. Over the 31 years, I'm not sure how many lives or how many people it's touched and helped, but it's innumerable. So we're pleased to come together today to recognize uh, and memorialize, if you will, Ann Campbell with her name to this particular program. Ann was a great faculty member who began several of our most far-reaching community services. In 1983, she founded Project Help, an early learning program for preschool children with special needs. And this program was in place three years prior to the federal public law mandating services for very young children with developmental delays before they reached school age. And in 1989, Anne was instrumental in working to develop and implement the state agency that would oversee the services for children's birth to three, the Tennessee Early Intervention System. She maintained these activities while continuing to teach classes each semester at MTSU. As the Ann Campbell Learning Early Learning Center, it will remain Rutherford County's only early childhood program that is inclusive of children with a wide variety of learning needs. Project Help started as a program for children who had delays, very young children who had delays. And 31 years ago, that was pretty innovative in and of itself. But um, in a, about 2000, maybe 2001, we started looking at inclusion. Uh, the schools called it mainstreaming back in the day. There's a quote that's always hung in my office for probably 30 years, and I think it's so fitting today when we think of Dr. Campbell's work. It says, may he who has chosen to limit some of his children be merciful enough to guide the hands of those entrusted with their care. We're so thankful that Ann Campbell was entrusted with caring for our youngest and most special children. It's because of her work and her vision that the mission of the Ann Campbell Early Learning Center is a reality. Campbell passed away in 2011, but she was honored posthumously for her dedication to childhood education by a special joint resolution in the Tennessee General Assembly. Well, that's it for this edition of Out of the Blue. For more information on MTSU News, please be sure to visit mtsunews.com. Until next time, stay true blue.